Hi and welcome back. This is a kind of video that I've been waiting almost five years to make and that's because I'm doing what I'm hoping is much better and there's one particular intervention I'm pretty confident in attributing it to and that is extended Buchinger style fasting. So in this video I'm going to discuss the various types of fasting, the rationale for why it might work and the published science we've got that supports it. And in the next video I'm going to discuss my own personal experience, which symptoms have improved, which haven't yet and what I think the lessons are for everyone watching. So let's dive in. First of all I need to address the subject of why I'm making this video now. I've wanted my first video saying hey I'm doing better to be when I'm incontrovertibly better and I could be back to full exercise and work and doing sub 20 minute 5k's to prove it. That's not the case yet, this is still early days and I'm of the opinion that getting to that point will likely take several fasts over a 6 to 12 month period. So I could either wait that long to make incremental boosts every time I do a fast or possibly talk about it a bit sooner which might save some of you a few months or a year of your life if you decide to go down the same path and have similar positive results. So in principle yes this is a little bit early, I may yet have some crashes, I may yet sink back to that old baseline but I've got enough improvement so far in the few weeks since I'm back from my second fast that I feel confident enough that it's worth making this video. So let's talk about fasting itself, what is it? Well basically not eating food for some given amount of time. The length of that period and what you do consume determine the type of fasting that it is. On a short time frame most of us have heard of intermittent fasting. This generally involves squeezing all of your eating into an 8 hour period every 24. There's also the 5 to 2 version where you eat normally during the week and then not at all at weekends. As discussed in this recent video this could conceivably help with dysautonomic symptoms by reducing the load on the autonomic system as well as reducing MCASI type triggers or food intolerances. But intermittent fasting isn't what I'm talking about here. The subject for this video is extended fasting which is normally described as not eating food for anywhere between 1 and 3 weeks. But not all extended fasts are the same. You've got water fasts where you literally have nothing but water past your lips, you've got juice fasts which can sometimes be high in calories and perhaps closer to a diet than a true fast and then you've got Buchinger style fasting which involves either having a little juice or some broth at mealtimes which constitutes about 150 to 200 calories daily. So that's instead of a normal 2000 calories women would normally consume and 2500 for men. Water fasts are pretty hardcore and difficult to get through. You'll have some pretty rough moments as the body is starved of all nutrition. The Buchinger style has sometimes been called fasting on easy mode and in principle achieves the same goals but in a slightly less difficult way. That's what I chose to do under medical supervision at a clinic in Germany. That was the right choice for me but obviously might not be possible for everyone. So what's the rationale for extended fasting and why might it help resolve the disease mechanism of long covid? This recent study found that long haulers were more than twice as likely as infected recovered people to have viral proteins circulating in their blood. The authors conclude that this suggests viral persistence is indeed, maybe probably, a thing and we should go after it with antivirals. All good. But this does raise some big questions. Will those antivirals actually be able to target and knock out the viral persistence? Will doing that even break the doom loop that's causing the symptoms? Because remember 57% have symptoms but no proteins so perhaps they don't have viral persistence. And even if these antivirals do work how long are they going to take to develop, trial and actually reach the market? Would it not be simpler perhaps to take someone from that 43% group, that is the long hauler who has viral proteins, maybe persistence, but simply make their body behave like someone in the 21% group who also have proteins and maybe persistence but no symptoms. I.e. it's not the trigger per se, it's something specific to us long haulers in that 43% that's causing the problem. It's what I've been saying for a while and it makes sense given some of the acknowledged risk factors like ATP, rheumatoid arthritis and being female. All of those points directly related to a certain immune profile, perhaps one that can get tweaked into immune dysfunction and or autoimmunity where havoc and mayhem ensues. 
This diagram from a recent paper hypothesizing a mechanism for the ME-CFS subtype of long COVID is one I particularly like. How do we break this cycle and return the body to homeostasis? Well, I put it to you that the answer to this and the previous question about how we turn ourselves from someone who has reacted to that trigger to someone who doesn't is just to turn the bloody human off and on again. And short of reenacting the plot of flatliners, what's the best way to achieve that? Might it just be extended fasting? So let's look at what happens physiologically when you stop eating. In a nutshell, fasting does a number of things. Calms down your immune system and associated inflammation, resets your nervous system, forces your metabolism into a state of ketosis, that is burning fat for energy instead of glycogen. So pretty much kind of resets that energy conversion and production mechanism too. And of course, we have to mention the much hyped process of autophagy, where the body clears out lots of knackered old cells and dodgy, potentially viral proteins. There's also the process of mitophagy, where the body clears out knackered mitochondria. And if you've watched any of my recent videos with Professor Klaus Wirth, then you'll have a sense for why this could be so important. Now, there's loads and loads of science on the biological impacts of fasting, far more than I have time for in this video. But to sum it up, I thought it might be helpful to ask Claude AI why extended fasting might help chronic inflammatory conditions, which is exactly what long COVID is, in my opinion. Note that I didn't mention the words long COVID in the prompt, as I didn't want it to hallucinate back a series of talking points it had harvested from the relatively limited amount of scientific information online in its large language model on the subject of long COVID. Better to ask about things for which there is much more science out there, fasting itself and chronic inflammatory conditions. And of course, with the caveat that with any AI query, you really ought to go and dig the direct sources out yourself. Look at what came back. A brilliant laundry list of hot topics for this bloody wretched condition. Particularly the first six that Claude identified. I'm not going to read through them all, but by all means, pause and take your time. Apologies for the screenshots having come off my phone. So that's the logic or rationale for extended fasting. What about the direct science? Well, we've got quite a few papers showing that fasting directly impacts people suffering from chronic inflammation and autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. And we've got a case series that looks at 14 long COVID patients who did a single Bukinger style fast of duration between 6 and 16 days, of which 13 of the 14 self-reported an improvement in symptoms. I'm going to read out this section from the discussion part of the paper. Perceived overall health was enhanced, with improvements in common symptoms like fatigue, breathlessness, muscle pain and weakness, headache, joint pains and sleep difficulties, even less frequent but classical COVID symptoms like cognitive impairments, smell and taste disorders were ameliorated. Given the lack of therapeutic approaches to treat long COVID, our observations suggest that long-term fasting could be a non-pharmacological approach to treat long COVID. This is corroborated by a large number of studies showing that fasting targets multiple aspects of long COVID. So that's the rationale, the logic and the science, as far as we have it, on extended fasting as an intervention for long COVID. Links to everything discussed are in the description. In the next video, I'm going to talk about my experience going out to Germany to do two extended fasts over the period of three months apart, the improvements I've noticed during those fasts and since those fasts, my plan going forwards from here, and what you might want to do if you attempted to try it yourself. So look after yourselves. Until next time.